the convicts who escaped Alcatraz using dummy heads. There are some prisons so dark, so terrifying, they look like they've come straight out of a horror movie. One of the most infamous of these is situated in San Francisco Bay, a mile off the coastline on its own little island. Designed to securely incarcerate the most dangerous men convicted in the USA and ensure they had no chance of ever escaping. The name of the prison was Alcatraz. Initially used as a military prison from the late 1850s to 1933, Alcatraz then became a federal institution from 1934 up to its closure in 1963. The island was the perfect location to house some of America's most notorious criminals and masterminds, being surrounded by the extremely cold Pacific Ocean, swirling strong currents, and even the occasional shark. During its use as a federal prison, some of Alcatraz's most famous residents included Alvin Creepy Carpus, the original public enemy number one, the deranged and deeply violent Birdman of Alcatraz, murderer Robert Stroud, who incidentally was not allowed to keep any birds in his cell on Alcatraz as punishment for being caught distilling alcohol at his previous prison, and of course, the most infamous of them all, the tax-dodging gangster Al Capone. But the inmates who escaped from Alcatraz, the only men to ever succeed and make it off the island, were none of these. Instead, it was a comparatively small-time career criminal named Frank Morris and two bank robber brothers, John and Clarence Anglin, who etched their names in history as the prison's only ever escapees, with a fourth collaborator, Alan West, failing in his part of the attempt. Who were Frank Morris, Alan West, and the Anglin brothers? Frank Morris was a small-time crook with a troubled past. Raised in numerous foster homes, his first conviction was when he was just 13, and he continued to have issues with the law right up until he was sentenced to a 14-year stint in a prison in Louisiana for bank robbery. But in a move that foreshadowed his future, Morris successfully broke out of the prison and spent a year on the run before being caught and sentenced to Alcatraz as punishment in January 1960. The Anglin brothers, John and Clarence, were in cells next to Morris and were serving out their 10 and 15 year long sentences respectively when they, Morris and West, began to plan their escape. The two brothers, who were born almost exactly a year apart, were bank robbers and prolific ones at that, having targeted multiple banks and businesses before their luck ran out at the Columbia Savings Bank building in Columbia, Arizona, and they, along with a third brother, Alfred, were captured and sentenced to long periods in prison. But despite their long criminal history, the brothers were never violent. They robbed places at night when there was no one there and no potential for anyone getting hurt, claiming they only ever used a weapon once and it was a toy gun they brandished, not the most effective of firearms. After repeated escape attempts from both John and Clarence, they were each sent to Alcatraz, John in October 1960, with Clarence following shortly after in January 1961. Then, in another cell adjacent to the brothers and Morris, there was Alan West, a car thief and another habitual offender who had found himself sent to Alcatraz after a failed escape attempt from his prison cell in Florida. Together, these four men plotted their escape attempt from Alcatraz and very nearly fully succeeded. Some may say it was sheer chance that these four men ended up in cells so close together. They were all career criminals who already knew each other from previous incarcerations, had all attempted or successfully escaped prison previously, and all of whom were willing to try again. According to federal official records, Morris was exceptionally intelligent with an IQ of 133, which was higher than 98% of the population, so with him as the mastermind, the four men stood a strong chance of succeeding. The Preparations From the beginning of December 1961, this ragtag team of criminals planned their escape, with Morris at the helm. Over the course of the next six months, they slowly and methodically worked through their plan. For their first step, each man would smuggle spoons from the prison dining hall and pilfer discarded saw blades so they could painstakingly dig and widen the ventilation ducts beneath their sinks in their cells. To hide their activities by day, the prisoners covered up the hole with some convincingly painted fake vents made from cardboard, and by night Morris would play the accordion to drown out the sounds of the other men slowly scraping their way to freedom. 
Once they made it into the air ducts, the men sent up a secret makeshift workshop on a vacant top level of the cell block, where they could really start getting to work on their escape plan. They made four dummy heads out of paper mache and cleverly painted their own facial features onto them with the eyes shut. Each night, the men would leave their beds, which were padded out with clothing beneath the blankets, and with the dummy paper mache heads just showing, so as not to arouse the guards' suspicions while they worked. They continued stealthily pilfering materials, including 50 raincoats that they fashioned into life preservers based on designs that they had seen in Popular Mechanics, a magazine that was allowed in prison, and scraps of wood and screws to build some paddles. Incredibly, they also managed to create the most necessary item for their escape, a fairly hefty rubber raft measuring 6 by 14 feet, with seams stitched by hand and sealed using heat coming off the steam pipes nearby, another idea copied from prison magazines. Finally, they were ready. The Escape Attempt On June 11, 1962, the men seized the opportunity to escape. Just after lights out, Morris and the Anglin brothers met above the cell block as always, but Alan was nowhere to be seen. The cement he had used around the crumbling wall of his fake air vent had unexpectedly set solid, trapping him in his cell. He went back to sleep. Morris and the Anglin brothers carried on with the plan. The first step was breaking out onto the prison roof. It was the only sound they made during their attempt, and the guards barely stirred. The three men carrying all their equipment climbed down a 50-foot drain pipe and then scaled a 12-foot high barbed wire fence before running to the northeast shoreline, hidden securely from the patrolling guards and searchlights. From there, they inflated their raft using makeshift bellows and took to the rough seas, never to be seen again, literally. The next day, when the guards finally realized they were missing, a huge sea, land, and air search commenced. Over the next 10 days, the coast was scoured for any sign of the three men, but all that turned up was some evidence of their escape, a paddle found by a Coast Guard cutter on June 14th, and nearby, a wallet wrapped in plastic that looked like it belonged to one of the Anglin brothers. Remnants of what looked like the raft were discovered near the Golden Gate Bridge on June 21st. And finally, the next day, a deflated life jacket was found just off the shores of Alcatraz. The FBI's final report on the case gave no further evidence or information on the missing men, but surmised they must have drowned in their escape attempt. Ever since, there have been alleged sightings of the men and odd reports across the United States and other parts of the world. The Anglin family said that they received postcards and messages occasionally, and their mother received flowers anonymously every Mother's Day. But perhaps the most interesting was a letter sent to the FBI in 2013 after being received by the San Francisco Police Department and was later disclosed to the general public in 2018, allegedly written by John Anglin. Within it contained information on where his conspirators were allegedly buried and he was negotiating his surrender in exchange for cancer treatment. But whether any of these strange sightings and mysterious letters were genuine is unlikely and inconclusive. It was extremely improbable that Morris and the Anglin brothers successfully negotiated the dark and dangerous waters of Alcatraz Island to make it to the other side. And if they did, there's no evidence or traces of their movements since then. It's more likely that these reported sightings and strange occurrences are the work of malicious individuals and pranksters taking pleasure in the continual mystery surrounding their escape. Still, it's entirely possible that Frank Morris and John and Clarence Anglin actually did escape and have cloaked their movements ever since. If that were true, they would be the only ones to have ever succeeded in making their way through Alcatraz's deadly waters.